Hey guys, it's -a me, Billy Echo, and welcome back to another tablet review video. The kind people of Garmon reached out to me again and asked if I'm interested in testing yet another tablet from them. And since it's been a while since I've tested a new tablet and I enjoyed trying new tablets, I agreed. So thanks again, Garmon. Besides, I think they are still a rather small company and I kinda wanna help them grow because I think they deserve it. I'm really happy with my current PD1560 from them. And from all tablets I used so far, it was the one I liked the most. So I'm really looking forward to the new one. The tablet I'm gonna talk about today is the PD2200, which is the biggest in their lineup in terms of their pen displays. But before we start the actual review, there's currently a 15 US dollar coupon for the rest of April in the Amazon store for this pen display. So if you consider buying it, you can save yourself $50. Oh, and a kind reminder, my English is still pretty bad, so I'm sorry if I misspell anything or if you encounter any mistakes in my sentences. Alright, that's enough, let's start with the unboxing. The requirement for the tablet is of course that you have either a laptop or a computer to which you can connect the tablet. It's compatible for Mac OS and Windows, but you need to be sure it has an operating system of 7 or higher for Windows users and for Mac users 10.12 or higher. Before I get into any details about the tablet and stuff, we're gonna take a look at what the box contains. Of course for one, the pen display itself. Several cables which include the HDMI, USB and power adapter, and two power cables. One with a power plug for Europe and the other for the UK. Furthermore a stylus pen, a pen holder with 8 nips inside, a glove and a quick start guide. After the unboxing, the next step is connecting the cables, which is pretty easy. I don't think I really need to explain this, but I'll do it anyway. You plug the power cable to the power point in the power adapter and then to your tablet, and the USB and HDMI to the tablet and the other ends to your computer or laptop. Easy. But just a little annotation that the cables are overly kind of short. I could hardly connect them from the tablet to my PC, which is under my desk. I'm just mentioning it so you can keep that in mind if you consider getting this tablet yourself. So the tablet is now connected to either a tablet or a PC. But before you turn it on, we have to install the driver. Make sure to close all art programs beforehand and that no other pen tablet driver is installed before installing the new one. Now go on the official Garmin website, click on driver download and select the correct tablet model. According on which operating system you have, select either the Windows or Mac download button. After finishing the installation, you can now open the driver where you can change the settings. Ok, so let's get into the details. The PD2200 is 21.5 inches large, which is large. It's roughly the size of my actual monitor. I only have worked with tablets that are 15.6 inches or smaller so far, so working with this tablet was kind of a new experience. After ripping off the plastic foil thing, I was actually kinda surprised when I saw the surface of the tablet, because I thought it would have a glassy one like their previous PD1560. But there's actually an anti-glare screen protector on the glass cover, which is pretty nice, cause now the screen is matte instead of shiny and reflective. They said you could peel it off too, but I kinda don't want to. The protector is there for a reason. So I needed a while to get used to drawing on it after drawing on a glassy surface for the past two years or something, but after that drawing on it feels just great. Also the stand was already connected to the tablet when I unpacked it, which is cool cause last time I needed to do it myself. Just like with the PD1560 it has an adjustable stand, so this way it's easy to find the right angle you wanna work with. On the left side of the tablet are 8 programmable buttons that have little icons and already prescribed shortcuts, which you can customize in the driver menu. But these aren't like the usual buttons where you can press them physically into the tablet. These are touch, so to press them you just need to touch them. On the right side you have 5 setting buttons, for which you have a little instruction on the foil thing we peeled off at the beginning. Besides the on off button, these are for manually calibrating the color, brightness, saturation and stuff of the screen. Which you probably need to do, since it was quite a miss from the color look of my monitor. Ok, let's move on. What's pretty good about the pen is that it's battery free, so I don't need to be charged ever. 
It has a pressure sensitivity of 8192 levels, which is meanwhile common for the most screen tablets, and supports a 60 degree tilt function. The area where you hold the pen has a rubbery-like area, which makes it more comfortable and firm to hold. It has a two standard buttons that are good to reach and press. Generally, the pen is a bit shorter and lighter. As an example, here is the pen of their PD1560. I personally think it's a good thing and drawing with it feels more comfortable. It also has a pretty accurate responding time and I didn't notice any major lags. And I think the calibration is pretty good. Not perfect, but definitely better than with the last two tablets I've tested. I don't think there's much to say about the pen holder. Just like last time you have two different ways to place a pen, which is pretty much useless, I don't know why I keep mentioning this unimportant info, and contains the nibs for the pen. It is also needed to remove the nibs from the pen. The glove is smooth and light and fits my hand good enough. You could practically wear it with your left hand too, even if it's not designed for it. I don't feel much of a difference and it doesn't feel uncomfortable either. So, what's my opinion about the PD2200? Firstly, I really like this pen display. I can't say if I enjoy working with this one more than their previous, they are both real good. Let's get to the part that stands out the most. The size. I mean, it's a really cool feeling drawing on such a big screen, even if I had some problems at first because everything is so far away now, but you really don't need such a big screen. I know my following is pretty young and I'm gonna tell you, bigger isn't better. You don't automatically draw better because you have a bigger screen. I would say pen displays the size are useful for a professional artist or if you want to use it as a second monitor or something. You also have to consider the space available for you at your workplace. My desk for example doesn't offer very much space and a tablet this size? Well, I can move it around that much and now it's even harder to reach my keyboard than before. But that's totally on my own circumstances. All I wanted to say is that you have to keep your own workspace in mind before choosing a tablet. Personally, I'm also not the biggest fan of the buttons, simply because they are touch and now I have to like hover over the buttons to not press them and this is kinda uncomfortable. They are also barely noticeable since there are no outlines or anything that would make me see the buttons, besides the symbols of course, which I can't see at all when it's dark. So I kinda just abandon them, cause I either touch the wrong button, I miss it or I waste time searching for the button I wanna use. This is kinda sad for me because I'm generally a fan of these shortcut buttons on the tablets, but I know a lot of people don't even use these hotkeys on the tablets and rather use their keyboard for this, so there's this solution. But what I really like is the pen, it's lighter and shorter than the usual pens and the rubbery stuff offers a better grip. Generally, drawing with it feels just great. Also, since it's battery free, I don't need to think about charging it, which I had often forgotten with the other pins. Overall, I can personally work really good with it. Of course, there are a few things I don't like that much, like the buttons, but even after some time I found my way to work with them, even if it's just one button. <laughs> but overall, I like it. I can work good with it and I'm probably gonna continue working with it. So, thanks again Garmon for this pretty cool tablet. I think that's all I have to say about it. If you got any questions, just ask in the comment and I try to answer them. So traditionally, here comes the speed paint. Hope you guys enjoy and thanks for listening.
and stuff of the screen of <laughs> calibrating the 